Hello everyone, it's been a little while since we've seen the 140 on the channel. Um, to be honest, it's been a little while since we've done a lot on the channel, which has been absolutely manic. Uh, but today we are doing a video just to quickly show you some of the winter chassis upgrades that we've done. So last time this was out on track was November um, at Brands Hatch for the EST Hack Engineering uh, track day, um, which it did well on uh, as it often does. Um, that was the first time out with the limited slip diff in it, which made a huge difference on track, very chuffed with that. But it then starts showing up your next weaknesses. So one of them, um, especially as power has been increasing slowly, the engine and gearbox are moving around quite a lot. These are on very soft mounts, which is great for refinement and driving around in luxury. But when it comes to track work, the whole engine and gearbox shifting side to side as you change direction is really, really not ideal. Um, I wouldn't, say, I wouldn't go as far as saying it unsettles the car, but it's certainly not the nicest feeling. Then also body roll. If you go back through our track photos, you'll see the car is quite far over on one side. Um, and it's fast, but it doesn't feel very stable. It feels more like you're holding onto it rather than in control um, a lot of times. So to run you quickly through the parts we've used, um, we have used PowerFlex engine mount inserts. We've just gone for the yellow Sort of road series ones nice and soft um, but they fill in all the voids in the standard engine mounts so they stop the amount of movement that you can get there um, we've also used powerflex fast road gearbox mounts which are again the yellow softer material but so much stiffer than a standard mount um, which is really good news um, and then h&r anti-roll bars which are quite a bit thicker than standard and will hopefully really keep the car planted especially with grippier tires and just keep it a bit more alert and, and mean that I'm in control rather than feeling like my hair's on fire and that I'm just holding on to the thing. So without further ado, get the parts fitted and then we'll take a drive afterwards and see what we think. Luke's just been busy pulling the car apart. To do anti-roll bars on these platforms, it's uh, not a five minute job. Both the anti-roll bars sit above their respective subframes. So you have to lower the subframes down um, to get access to everything, pull everything out. And it is long-winded, but certainly worth it. You can see the real difference between the two sets. So these are our standard set. Um, this car's a 2017 uh, M140. So, um, 15 mil rear and the front one actually tapers down so it's between 22 and a half and 25 and a half mil um throughout front one's not not insignificant but this rear anti-roll bar is pretty much doing nothing especially when you've got decent tire size decent grip on there and some decent springs whereas the h and r bars are a hell of a lot thicker um so we've got if i show you one here uh, we've got a 28mm front bar 
and a 20 mil rear bar. And this front bar also has adjustability, so it's got two different positions, uh, which is always really handy for dialing in or out oversteer um, or understeer, depending on your balance. So in my experience, I've always run a stiffer rear anti-roll bar. This doesn't have adjustment, so essentially to allow for that, we'll set the front to soft. Uh, so we get on, see if it's too oversteery, and then we can move it from there. Uh, it's always better that way than understeer. No one likes understeer, boring. <laughs> um, these h &R bars also come with bushes, which uh, are polyurethane material, and they're also, they've got a very nice inlay, um, so they're self-lubricating, which is very nice indeed. So Luke's gonna crack on getting this all back together. Um, we'll see how it is on the road, but really the, the proper test is definitely gonna be on track before the car. <sighs> It didn't seem like a, an issue with damping, it's more just general body control wasn't that great. It was quick, but it was, it was not the best in terms of feedback. So really hoping this sorts it out and just makes it that bit more sure-footed and gets a bit more grip across the axle. Stay tuned and we'll find out. Job done. Uh, <laughs> if anyone's done anti-roll bars on these before, you'll know it's not a great deal of fun. The anti-roll bars essentially sit above the subframes on these, so you have to lower pretty much everything down uh, to change them. Not the end of the world, but certainly uh, not as easy as some of the older models, A3060, like 46, where they're hanging right there for you. But they're in, the engine mount inserts are in, the gearbox mounts are in, also fitted an ultra racing strut brace. All of these parts are available on our website. Nice and easy to find. And I think we've pretty much got all of those in stock at the moment. But yeah, it would be interesting to see what difference it makes. It's certainly holding the parts side by side. And as you've just seen, the difference in the anti-roll bars is pretty massive. So let's see how it goes. after all of that work and it's really interesting actually the difference it's made you have to excuse the road noise from these tires but even just at low speed getting a bit of steering into it you can feel it's loading up correctly rather than just really rolling which wasn't as i said before i think it, it wasn't hugely noticeable as a as a car with a lot of body roll before but it's sharpened it up so much just in those anti-roll bars and I think the brace in the front's probably helped a bit as well, um, just to keep it, keep it a bit stiffer and, and really it's just the way it responds to the input so much better that's really interesting. In terms of engine and gearbox mounts, you can certainly feel it. You put your foot down and you don't feel like the engine's trying to pull itself out of the car. It, everything just responds that bit better. There is the slightest bit of NVH at a certain rev and on idle, but really, to be honest, I'm already used to it. It's, it's not anything bad at all. And, I've had hard engine and gearbox mounts and things before and, and you know, I know how grim that can be. This is nothing like that at all. They're spot on really. I think um, really all the mods we've done, especially with the rear subframe bush inserts that we'd already done, have turned this into a, a car that really felt like the chassis wasn't up to much in something that actually is really 
a very effective car at managing its grip and it's, it just does everything perfectly really. It's, it's nice and neutral, um, obviously it can do lots of oversteer, it's got enough power for that, but it, it responds well and even with big grippy tyres on it, it, it seems to manage them so much better than when, you know, when we first started out with this project with a standard chassis. So all in all, very, very good experience and I'd recommend every single part uh, to any 140 owner, whether you do all in one big go or bit by bit or however you want to do it, definitely worthwhile. What's next for us? We're pushing more power out of this thing, which will be all revealed in a future video. But as, as we're upping the torque and power, I think we're still overcoming the rear subframe bush issue and we, we're getting quite a bit of uh, essentially rear, rear axle walk. So going down the road is it, trying to steer the car sideways the whole time, which is dramatically better with those inserts. But ultimately what we're going to do is swap to a full Powerflex Black Series bush um, for the subframe bushes. Might see if we can throw a few other little tricks in there at the same time and just really start to push this platform ahead of some track days this year. We'll catch you next time.